Oh, me. How's everybody? Are we here? Are we here yet? Matthew, are you going to see the Chattanooga Dogs Saturday? They're going to be at the Mountain Opry. Hey, Grievous. Oh, I'll be better as soon as I get some caffeine in me. Hey, Mason. Just playing. This will probably be short and sweet. I... <laughs> Hey, y'all. Hmm. Uh, it's first I've played today, too, so apologies. Uh, Mason, yeah, one of my, uh, actually... I guess started out following me on TikTok. One of my TikTok followers brought me that sign. He he was visiting the area and uh, we met up and had some supper and he gave me a sign. So go figure. <laughs> Going to nine mile, man. Well, that'd be fine. Spur, did it take you 10 weeks? Should have took you about 10 weeks to finish those. Seriously. I mean, if you put a week's time on each of those lessons, you'll be surprised. You'll be really surprised at how good your playing gets. I, I'm not kidding. A lot of people blow through them and then they have issues with timing that I hear when they're playing or or they, you know, their slides won't be smooth, or there, there'll be a variety of things that, that sound kind of weird. But the folks that will spend and, and really put that time uh, in, in the beginning, that, that makes a huge difference. Hello, Mike Price from Kentucky. Man, you're like the first guy from Kentucky that didn't, didn't just start out with what county he was from. I don't, you know, just about everybody. I know from Kentucky, they'll tell, they'll tell me what county they're from. Uh, yeah, Mason, less than 300. It, it's kind of nuts, man. It's, uh, it's just, it's just rolling right along. Hopefully, hopefully in the next few days, we'll, we'll hit that mark and then I can set a date to give away a banjo. Hey, Dwayne, I was just talking about you indirectly. I was, uh, so Mike in here is uh, from Kentucky, and he, he introduced himself as Kentucky banjo player from Lexington, which which I found was interesting because he didn't tell me what county he was from, and he he has since Fayette County, which I kind of knew that because I I've, I've met some folks from Fayette County before, and I said, is there a city? <laughs> and then they tell me Lexington. So it, it, it's a very Kentucky thing. It's a very Kentucky thing. Yeah, Laurel, see? <laughs> back, back years ago in a previous life, I was human resource manager for a factory in Dalton. And uh, I'd, get, I'd get a lot of guys in from Kentucky, you know, and we'd talk, you know, we'd do a job interview and stuff like that. And, and they'd be like, yeah, I'm from Harlan County. Uh, Harlan County where? <laughs> So it's very, very Kentucky, very Kentucky. I, there, there's, there's, I don't know if there's another state that does that. So there's that, which I, I find highly amusing. 
Yeah, see, you know he's from Hazard, but what town is in Hazard? Who knows? <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm still working on my coffee. I, I, I started on this before I started the live stream, but you know, that's uh, just kind of how it is. <laughs> A lot of buttons to push, wheels to turn, lights to turn on, stuff like that. Next thing you know, my coffee's about to get cold. Man, does anyone live in Wyoming? Have you ever met anyone from Wyoming? I mean, it might not exist. It could just be fictional. <laughs> All right, I'm almost done with my coffee. But it, it, it's good. It's good. Chit, you know, the chit chat part is is fun, and because the because the subject matter is pretty small. You know, it, it it's pretty small. Wait, see, I th thanks for the education, Dwayne. <laughs> My favorite. Kind of not hot coffee. Guess who's going to be up all night? It's just, it's just lazy. Uh, so, detuners. So, I will answer questions about detuners. I have, as you can see over here, I've got my price banjo sitting there. It has detuners on it as well. This this one has the uh, Cheetah Keys, which, which are pretty cool. And then I've got the Keith tuners, the Beacon Banjo Keith tuners on the price. Some detuners. What? How do you play melody so easy with rolls on it? Just a lot of practice. Trust in the rolls. You got to trust in the rolls. That should be a song. Trust in the rolls. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a certain amount of trust that you have to put into uh, the rolls that you're playing to make sure, you know, just keep everything working. the detuners here let me move I need a chair with wheels that would be like modern so with the detuners watch these little these little silver bits right there there and there as I turn these you see them move And uh, but you you can see you can see them moving. And with the with the cheetahs, these are great because all right, 
I, and y'all have to trust me. So some of y'all were here on on Instagram stream that I did a couple of days ago where I put new strings on this banjo and, and I never touched the detuners. I never touched them. I just put new strings on. Only thing I did to the detuners put a little oil on there. And then it's just, uh, I had set them previously and occasionally they have to be adjusted, but they work every time. <laughs> And you can use them in tons of stuff. You can use them in Cripple Creek. So, I mean, they're super useful. Now, uh, Matthew, so Matthew's talking. I, you can find videos of Matthew playing detuner songs like Flint Hill Special. It, it, he's doing it without without the mechanism. And it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. It, it may be worth it, but I, I say spend a little money on the front end. I mean, time is money, you know? So, uh, so there's that. So these are the, so these are the cheetah keys. And, and they just mount, they just mount on your, on your headstock. See, y'all can see how that mounts. It's just, yeah, there you go. They just they just mount on there kind of nicely. They're on their finger tight. People say, well, they're going to leave a mark on your headstock. Yeah, they might. And uh, But I figure there's not a mark that's uh, that can be left on there that, that couldn't be took off. Furthermore, I don't see me ever taking these off. I mean, if I do take them off, it'll, it'll be to replace them with another set of these. So I don't, I don't really have an issue with it. And, and the fact that I can be on stage, hang on, let me, I can be on stage and if my banjo goes a little bit out of tune, I can retune, but my tuner stays set. So that's, that's a big deal to me. Why were tuners invented? Well, that's a good question. So Earl Scruggs obviously was hearing some ideas about moving notes. Like the first recording that you hear of Earl's breakdown, he uh, he's doing it without any detuners, and, and I'm sure you got to thinking that, man, that's awfully embarrassing to have that on a live recording where you tune down with your regular tuner, and then you tune back up and. And then you're not in tune. Furthermore, you didn't hit the note you wanted to hit. So you got to thinking, I'm sure, and it's like, man, what if we could just tune it to a certain spot? So he started out with one tuner. So he had that one tuner. A tune. <laughs> so he started out with a one, so he could do one, adjust where he wanted it. And always go back. And then he got to thinking, man, I could do that on the third string too. Then he had to drill another hole. Well, his first hole was in the wrong spot. So you, you see like old Flat and Scruggs videos and stuff and pictures where he has this little cover covering him up. And some people want to talk like it. He was trying to hide the technology. Really what, what he was hiding was the mess that he made on his headstock by drilling holes in it. So you got three holes drilled in there just to get two pegs. Uh, 
So th this is this is a more gentle solution where you're not actually boring holes in the headstock of your banjo. I wish I had a banjo with, do I know anybody that's got one? Yeah, but it's, I can't go get it now. Uh, if I had a plant a little better, I could have borrowed it for this live stream. But anyway, but like the ones Earl had, they, they're permanently mounted. Uh, this dude named Lonnie Hoppers makes them. And now, but I mean, Cluson made them back in the day. There, there were lots of folks that were making them and you drill two holes in your headstock, the little mechanism turned and bent the string for you. And that's, I mean, that's pretty, uh, pretty cool. And it's a neat idea. And I'd like to have a set. And I would totally put them on this banjo as well. I mean, if I, if I had a, you know, I'd get somebody to install the hoppers. I wouldn't do it myself. I, I, I can't be trusted with tools, but I, I would allow somebody else to install a set of hoppers on this because they look really elegant and, and they always work. Blake, it may have been that or it could have been the other way around. I, I'm not exactly sure of the timeline when Earl started bending notes like that. Uh, so there's that. So I think the Cheetah Keys are about a, between $150 and $200, and that's the Cheetah Key. And they're only good for two strings. So they're, they're set up just to work two strings, and, you know, it's going to be your third and second string. So that's, so that's the Cheetah Keys. But 99% of the time, those are the only two that I'm ever going to mess with. Well, primarily because that's all I've got. You know what's cheaper than a banjo? No banjo. Dude, just get the just get the pegs. Just get the pegs. That could have been your Christmas gift, man. a sign or maybe or maybe I could sell t-shirts you know just, just trust the rolls just trust them uh, so let's look at let's look at these so what I've got on this one is I have the uh I've got Bill Keith detuners on this one see see how those are so they 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 just replace they just replace the the actual tuning button and there's good and bad about that one the good thing is you can see the beautiful headstock. See, it's all it's all right there, really nice and pretty. I'm not covering anything up. You know, I've, I've still got four I've got four pegs. Uh, but these are a little more pricey. Let's see. So I got to re I got to tune up.
Is it an antique? It was made in 1983, so I wouldn't necessarily say it was an antique. Uh, so the Keith Tenors are over $300 for a pair. If you'll notice, I got two pair on this. So, I got... Matthew, I bought the tuners. <laughs> I bought them, man. And, uh, tanky tuners would sell. And I don't know, man. But, so these have, you see these little screws, these little thumb screws? They adjust a spot where where the string will stop when you're tuning it. So let me, so let me go through the process of setting these. Bear with me. This is, this is just the process that this takes. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's flat. That's flat. There we go. And see, you really can't see it work. All it's doing is turning the... Let's do it. If I hide my face, maybe. You can see it's just... It's just turning the peg. It's just turning the peg. These work too. They're really nice. the The thing I the thing I run into with these, it's a banjo. So, as you play, things are going to shift. Things are going to move around, and your instrument is going to get out of tune. And you say, "Well, Jim, let's just retune." And you could, but. <laughs> You saw how much time it took me to set those. So let's say that string was wound up, you know, it was a little flat, like B strings often do. So you got to unset the two screws, get it set, go down to the note you want set, set that screw, the bottom screw. And then you have to set the top screw. Oops, it's a little flat. And I will tell you, a band leader, especially if you, you ain't it, is going to get really upset with you because now your banjo is out of tune. Sometimes you gotta use both hands. Now I'm out of tune, which means I have to reset everything. You do get better at it, and you, <laughs> you do get better at it over time. Typically, what I did when I was using these tuners on a regular basis, I like if we had an instrumental number that I was going to use, or a vocal number, or any song that I was going to use the D tuners in, we go ahead and get that one done to begin with. stuff up. I'm not, not really playing songs. So that's just a...
ahead and put a set on the uh, fourth and <laughs> first strings as well because, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. They're fussy. So you see, right. thank y'all for sticking in there. This is Jim Tunes the banjo for 30 minutes. Still not right. So here, this is one of the reasons that you will see people that have Keith tuners on their on their banjo, and they're never set. Why? Because it's a pain to retune your banjo, and it takes forever. tuners. They're expensive. They're pretty. They work fantastic when they work. Uh, and they, they, they make really nice just regular tuners. So there's that. But <laughs> Mando, I talked to Bill about that years ago. Bill, Bill was a good friend. And, uh, you know, part of the reason why at one time I had, an, I, I had a set on my Stelling as well. And uh, I sold those. But, I mean, Bill's a nice guy, and I used his tuners, and we just, you know, we had long talks about them, mostly me complaining. Uh, <laughs> but, and he assured me that it was mostly because I didn't mess with them enough. And he's probably right. And, and these definitely need to be serviced. 
Uh, Beacon banjos will serve with the tuners, but that means I have to take them off and send them. I just work with them like they are. So, so there's that. And so those are the Keith tuners. Uh, you decide what's right for you. Some people do not like the clutter of the of the cheetah keys. So you know the cheetah keys add they add clutter to your headstock. Some people don't go for that. Some people like the cleaner lines. Some people go for the functionality of the cheetah keys and say, eh, yeah, I'm just going to have to have some clutter to get the functionality. So that's the, the I mean, and, and, and neither, neither way is wrong. Uh, I just, I know like for me, once I, once I got used to the cheetah keys, put them on the banjo and, and played it a lot, I found I was using them all the time mostly because I knew they were always going to work. And I mean, I could play a gig tonight somewhere and put the banjo away and, you know, and then not use that banjo again for a week, pick it up again, and the tuners are still going to be set. All I have to do is just retune the banjo. But the tuners remain set. Whereas the Keith tuners, well, you saw. And, and I, you know, some people are going to think, you know, that I was being overly dramatic on setting these things. But I'm telling you, they can be a real bother sometimes. And I don't, you know, I don't hate them. I, I mean, I really wouldn't want to cover up this headstock with the cheetahs. I mean, I do like the looks of that. If I, you know, if I had a... I mean, I definitely look at maybe getting another. I mean, it would be nice if if they were the cheetahs were invisible. Uh, there's a Sonny Osborne ugly tuner. I don't know if they're still making those or not. Also ugly. Also cover up part of your headstock, uh, but also work every time, and that that's pretty important. So that's that's pretty much all I got to say about D tuners and. I was I was hoping that I could clip this thing together and, and utilize part of this video as another video talking about detuners and uh, it ain't gonna happen. I mean, this is live. Stuff happens live. Happens live. And uh, and they're also three hundred bucks. Where the the cheetahs are are, are the cheetahs? Dwayne would know. Dwayne are are the cheetahs available? Those of y'all aren't like might be watching this later. I'm talking to Dwayne Hess, uh, if you don't see the chat going by, but you should be able to see that. I hopefully, hopefully it's there. Uh, so they're not, see, so right now, really, unless you find a used set of cheetah keys, You, you can get them. I, and what well, they run? 150 bucks, 200 bucks. I paid 150 for mine. I just, I got them back when you could get them. And the the Keiths, I got them at wholesale because, you know, Bill was a friend and I had a little music store back then. And so I was just, you know, I was selling a bunch of them anyway. Because that was really, at that point, the only option. 199 is what the cheetahs are going to cost. And Gold Tone will be selling those. So I guess I guess Vernon or whoever sold that to Gold Tone. But see, I'm not happy with the tuning on this banjo. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to undo my pegs, all the little set screws. And now I can now I can reset. That's why 
I use the... That's why I use the uh, Cheetah Keys. It's not an endorsement. I, I have no agreement with Cheetah Key folks. I have no agreement with... Uh, with the uh with beacon banjo either i mean it's just they just work and uh totally stuff like just in time i i finally got the other banjo in tune <laughs> and so now now we're now we're back back to this and, and but that's that's what they do uh if you want to play songs like plain hill special you're gonna need a set of these tuners you're just gonna i mean people say like matthew in here you know matthew doesn't use them it's just because he's, well, Dwayne said he was tight, which. It doesn't sound the same with slides. You could do it with bends. But that's not going to sound the same either. <laughs> uh, so Mando brings up a good point. You could do what Raymond Fairchild does and bend above the nut. But Raymond Fairchild cannot... Raymond Fairchild cannot make this sound. He can't do that. Raymond can't go down. Raymond can only go up. So he could tune to he could tune to D and go up, but he can't go down. And so that's that's a huge that's a huge deal. I mean, you could if Ben. I mean, you can. So John Grover mentions that he got a set of shallers and the G, G string keeps going out of tune. That was my issue with the shallers. And at least with the Keiths, once I had them set, they did stay set really well. With these, if I go out of tune, I can adjust on the fly, middle of the song, D tuners are still gonna work. So like I can take, let's say the B string, Retune, D tuner will still work. Didn't have to set anything. So that's 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 a freaking big deal. That's a big deal. Alright, let's see some questions here. Mason's right. If you go if you go into the, that kind of measures, just spend the money. Just spend the money. Get some tuners. They're fun. Uh all right, let's see here. So, 
any, any questions? <laughs> this, this, didn't, this didn't go nearly as smooth, 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 smoothly as I thought it would. But the, but the, the Keith tuners did exactly what the Keith tuners do, and it took me a while to get them set. And uh, I hate that for y'all. Dwayne's correct. It's money well spent. It, and you're worth it. You, you, are, you right there. Right, where are you? You're right there somewhere. Yeah, you're totally worth it. <laughs> you're totally worth it. Spend some money on yourself. It's okay. It's okay. You bought a banjo. Buy you some, buy you some D-tuners. Get, get you the Cheetah Keys when you can get them. Uh, Matthew, no, they can't. I mean, Earl Scruggs couldn't make it work. Don Reno couldn't make it work. Uh, I mean, you do not have the precision to get back in tune. Like when you have done those songs and when I've heard you do it, you wind up out of tune. Yeah, it's close, but it's still out of tune. With these, and you can throw them in a song and not have to worry about being quite so precise. Here's your challenge. And we, we, we can put them in just about anything. <laughs> and, and when you've got a good set that you can count on, you find all kind of places that you can use them. places to use the detuners. stuff on the fly. Best reason to not use the tuners? I mean, just because you don't want to. But other than that, I mean...
I played it twice. <laughs> I played it twice. You'll be able to go back and watch this video again. Lessons with Marcel. <laughs> Marcel, for an instrument that's already very rarely in tune, it seems reckless to use those. The way I see it, Marcel, is you might as well. It's already out of tune. You know, it's already out of tune. Uh, you might as well just go ahead and enjoy the enjoy the the more out of tuneness. You know, that's a. Uh... <laughs> tuners and then the you know but you you have options you have options uh, the two options that I have I've got the uh, cheetah keys and I've got the Keith tuners both work the cheetah keys to me are simpler easier to deal with I'm almost always almost in tune with these whereas the Keith tuners is pretty precarious it's pretty precarious All right. Well, questions? I could do like Marcel and we could play, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to step on Marcel's turf and play Oregon Trail. We could do Lemonade Stand. We could play, <laughs> oh God. Yeah, I'm not playing, I'm not playing Oregon Trail with Marcel anymore. He wound up killing me. I'm just, it's not even fun. Right. But, you know, but Marcel and I are going to the zoo. I know that's going to happen. <laughs> okay. So Marcel, so the Keith, the, the <laughs> so the Cheetah Keys, so you see the little doohickey, do two little metal pieces. So when these... So they move. And, and they just mount, they're just mounted to the headstock. You know, it's, it's nothing graceful. It's just, uh, it's just how they work. And they just mount on there. They stay pretty much where you put them, unless you run into somebody. The Keith tuners, on the other hand, they're these gizmos that replace the tuners that came on your banjo. And they have cams and stuff built in. <laughs> and I just unset these. So you're just in time to watch me get these set. So you get your banjo in tune. And tune. Now we got to set the detuners. And I got two buttons on, two little knobs on the back that we adjust or you tighten up. So we tighten this first one up. And you pray that it's close enough. And then you got to do the other one. And then you... how those work. The problem being is that if your banjo goes out of tune, wait, no, let me rephrase that. When your banjo goes out of tune, which will be like at the end of this song that we just played, especially if you've used your detuners, then you got to retune your banjo. Well, you can't just retune, you got to reset everything. 
And you know, you can't just unhook one. I mean, you can unhook one string. So it's, if it's your B string that went out of tune, which it's, it's your B string that went out of tune, then you unhook both little, you unhook both little dots. Or maybe you get lucky, you can get away with unhooking one. And then crank it down. You might can get away with one, but usually you gotta reset both. And I found like playing with a group, using both of the, using the, these tuners was, it, it didn't take long for the band leader to discourage me from using the D tuners. He'd be like, well, let's skip Flint Hill Special tonight. So the original design, Marcel, would be the, uh, very similar to way to the Cheetah Keys that I've got. Uh, Earl, Earl drilled a hole in his banjo headstock and put a little cam that he could bend that string. And then he drilled another hole to do the other one. So he, that's, that's the way it started with that. Uh, there's a guy, Lonnie Hoppers, one of Bill Monroe's banjo players, uh, one of many. Uh, he, you can still get a set of hoppers and you have to drill a hole in your headstock. So the original, this is more like the original design and these sound more like Earl. I mean, it, it has that sound. There's a, I mean, like with the, with the regular tuner, it's a smooth drop. With these, there's a, there's a roll. I don't know. Maybe we could stick it in, um, something like Audacity and, and, and watch the, the way the note drops, you know. I mean, you can really snap. Or you can go slow. But you see how it kind of speeds up, slows down. So that's, so these are closer to the original. They're certainly easier to manage and you can retune on stage and nobody gets mad at you. I find I use, I find I use these all the time. I use them when I shouldn't. Uh, what do I do when your digital tuner and three phone tuners say different things on your tuning? Uh, I use my tuning fork, typically. I mean, I, I get close. Uh, it's a banjo. <laughs> Uh, Marcel, yeah, very much like a pedal steel. You know, Buck, Buck Trent, he had, he could, he had a palm, two palm buttons too, to where he could raise pitch of strings as well. So he could go down. And then he had a palm, had a little palm button that he could push that would raise, he could raise that up to, a half step, you know, so you go from B to C. And then he had another one that did something else. So totally could do that. Uh, Jake Jenkins, that the late great Jake Jenkins that played with Carl Shiflett, uh, he had like a palm button that he could push th to raise that up to a C. Let's see here. I know nothing about banjo. Index finger missing on the right hand. Last one. Give him five string banjo. You still have enough fingers. <laughs> you only need three. I've, I've known several folks without index finger, and so they use they use you know their ring and middle finger to pick with. To totally playable. I mean, what Jerry Garcia? What he missing like his? Uh, he's missing like his middle finger. So so he wore pick on the index and, and ring. You know, totally, totally, whatever, whatever works, you can, you can do it. Let's see. Any other questions that I'm going to get out of here? We can channel hop tonight. We may do that. We might channel hop. We might go, we might go to Instagram later and I'll just sit and pick tunes and
on average, people have less than 10 fingers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is true. That's why we that's why we have so many. That's why we have so many. You know, you don't really need all that many on your left. I have I have an ulnar entrapment, and sometimes it's really bad. And you know, there's surgical options where they move your ulnar nerve, that's your funny bone, up here. I'm not into that. Don't want to do that. So whenever that's inflamed and really hurt, I, I can't feel my pinky and, or my pinky or half my ring finger. And I I have a whole bunch of tunes that I can just play with two fingers. Well, I could play you all a tune and get out of here. I was trying to think of something I could do with the tuners. typically play with tuners, but there you go. You can play Crumple Creek with them too. Did we already do Flint Hill? Oh, we've made those Flint Hill noises over and over. Yeah, this is a pretty good banjo. It, it'll do. It'll do. All righty, people. See y'all next time. Figure out how to hit this button. Take a pick off. Oh. So, uh, good question, Stephen Morse. Will they work with a capo? So let's put a capo on. Notice it comes back up flat. Because the, the capo keeps the string from moving like it ought to. So I don't recommend using them with the capo. So there's that. All right, now I'm out of here. We'll see y'all.